I am back to do my February wrap up. So in the month of February, I read 11 stories, two of which were on my original TBR. So I read two from my TBR in January and two from my TBR in February. And I only have three books on my TBR in March. So here's hoping that I at least do the same, if not better. So for this month, I seem to enjoy my space opera, my science fiction books more than my fantasy, but I still had a good time reading. Okay, so for the first book I finished in the month of February was Fortune's Pawn by Rachel Bach. Sorry, I almost said Rachel Aaron, but that's the name she uses for her fantasy series. And this book caught me by surprise. I normally enjoy, I normally don't like books that have a cliffhanger ending, but I enjoyed Deviana Moore so much that I just had to keep going. So Fortune's Pawn follows Deviana Morris, who wants to get ahead in her career, and so following the suggestion of an old friend, ends up signing on to crew on a ship that is known for getting their security officers killed. And she is up for the challenge, because if she can manage to survive the year, she's pretty sure the promotion, or she's pretty sure the job that she really wants will become available to her. I really like Deviana, or, or Devi. I really enjoy Devi because she is a no-nonsense kind of person. She is more of a, let me confront you and let's deal with this situation now. She's very intelligent, but she's not subtle. She's not someone who has lots of secrets that she holds on to or she hides. She's more in-your-face, brash, bold kind of personality. And that's not a personality you see a lot of time on a woman. Even though I know many women who are like that in real life. In books, you, you just don't see that as much. And I enjoy this so much, I even read the second book in the series. It's actually a trilogy. Honor's Night as well. And that's just a continuation of that story. And I can't really give any information about the second book because it book one ends in a cliffhanger, which I don't typically like. But this one was really well done because immediately I wanted to read the next one in the series. And I'm glad I didn't have to wait a year or two the way most people did if they were reading it at the time they was coming out. And so I got the second installment of Debbie's series, and I will be reading the third installment in March. So I'm excited. And both volumes one and two, I ended up giving a five star. And, you know, the characters just further developed in the second book. And yeah, this, if you like space opera or science fiction, this is a series you should go read. Again, it's a trilogy. It's just three books. And yes, I'm calling out before I read the actual ending. I've enjoyed the first two books that much. So actually, the second book I finished in February was Trading in Danger by Elizabeth Moon, another space opera. But this one is more... <clears throat> Where a lot of space opera is more adventure and swash, you know swashbuckle, and it will have many times like a military element, this does, but in a different way. Kyla Arvada or Kai is kicked out of the space space force academy. She's in her last year, and ends up helping with a scandal, or ends up being on the side of a scandal, and is the fall guy. For what happens afterwards. Her family, who is who has a trade organization, welcomes her home with wide open arms. They were kind of annoyed that she wanted to go into the military. And so when she comes back, her family decides to put her on a ship and send her out into space. And it's a ship that they have, that they've asked her to go take to like a junkyard. However, this the family is pretty sure that she's going to decide to refit the ship instead 
because that is something that is typical of their family members. And Kai, I guess, never realized that. So she ends up going along and finds the opportunity to make a trade, you know, for her family, or finds a job, basically. So she decides to do that instead of going where she's supposed to, and ends up in a system where a war breaks out. And she's in an older ship with crew who know their ship jobs, but no one is military trained except her. Or So the story is she is trying to fulfill her contract uh, or the job that she's picked up and keep her crew safe and alive and make enough money so she can do repairs and re-outfit the ship. And I really enjoyed it as well. And I gave it five stars. So the next I read Valor's Choice by Tanya Huff. I think the overall series is considered a space opera. I would consider this more of a military sci-fi because it is played out on one world. So besides the, you know, first couple chapters, or the first two chapters maybe, where they're on a station where the unit is stationed, that's the only time they're more in space, or that's the only time they're in space, and then the rest of it plays out, out on a world. This follows Staff Sergeant Kerr, who is an act, who is basically an acting first sergeant, and is given a second lieutenant to train as they are sit, as their combat unit is taken from com, you know the combat rotation to help on a diplomatic mission and shenanigans follow you know follow that um, something I really enjoyed is how they handled relationships in that book it was really good and. I look forward to continuing the series. I did end up giving the series a four star, but it was close. So then the fourth book I read was actually Honors Night by Rachel Bach. I've already talked about that a little bit. So I'm going to go to the fifth book I finished was Fireheart Tiger by Elliot de Bodard. This was my first time reading something by this author, and I really enjoyed the writing, so I do want to read more by her, but overall I was disappointed in the story because I feel like it was the ending of a story. All we were given was a conclusion, and I wanted more. And so not being satisfied to my fullest extent, I ended up giving this book a three star. Or I ended up giving this book three stars. So then what I finished for 6th, 8th, ninth, and 10th were, were more of the manga volumes for one piece. So I finished five, six, and seven. Oh, five, six, seven, and eight. And this story is getting better. I understand what people are saying is really the first 10 books are the setup and then it gets better after that. I'm already starting, it's already starting to get better as they keep adding more crewmates. And I look forward to continuing the series. Still as a four star series for me so far. But I finished seventh, and between the manga was Dragon Pearl by Yoon Han Lee. This was a book I had originally started last year and hadn't finished. This is a middle grade sci er, space opera following Min. Min's family receives the news that her brother has deserted from his Space Force Academy, and she doesn't believe it. She says that's not his personality, he wouldn't do that, and so she goes out to prove that that information is false and wrong about her brother. And it's a good romp. I would suggest this to, um, for anyone who has a middle schooler or young adult or a younger aged young adult. I think this would work really well for. The only thing that bothered me or the, the thing that was biggest that bothered me was everything seemed very convenient. This is very much a plot-driven book and not a character-driven book. Even though this character has plenty of character quirks, the plot is what drives the story. And so everything, like, you know, she needs to go from this point to this point, so this is how it's going to happen. And then from here to here, and so this has to happen, you know, to get her to there. 
And so even when she came up against a challenge, it was fixed fairly quickly. Either she used her magic, she tricked someone, or someone else came along that gave her a way to do it. And which is, if I remember, I don't read a lot of middle grade, but if I remember right, that is a middle grade trait because they just want it fast and quick. But for me, it doesn't work as much because I'm more going, wait, why? Let me break this down. And I feel like probably even middle school or middle grade readers are probably going, wait, that was really easy. There was definitely some question things that were questionable for me. But I did give it four stars because I did enjoy it. The last thing I read in February was Mark and Reprisal by Elizabeth Moon. And this is actually the continuation of Kailara Vada's story. No. In this one, her family is attacked. And Kai is trying to figure out for the first part of the book if it was because of her actions in the first book or not. And you meet some more fun characters, more family members, especially one that was referenced in the first book. And you get to see how family can sometimes have a misguided perception of you, especially if you did one thing in your past. Sometimes you, they label you as that always, even though you change and you grow and become a different person. I really enjoyed it and I gave it a four stars. Editor here. I forgot to say that as part of my February TBR, I said that I would make progress on The Fires of Heaven by Robert Jordan, and I did. I did read more of it. Still have not finished it, and still am working on it. So I did actually finish that goal as well. So, All right. So that was my quick February wrap-up. I really enjoyed what I did read. I would... Everything I would... Everything I read this month, I would suggest that somebody go read even Fireheart Tiger, which was my lowest rating. I still think that was a great story, and more people should read it. I hope you all have a great day. Bye.